Hi, BDC Live. My name is Alex Rodriguez, and I'm a senior from Niskina, New York, majoring in computer science with a concentration in software development. At DePaul, I'm employed as a member of the eSports leadership team, where I help to organize university-sponsored eSports activities. DePaul launched our program in 2018, and since then has grown to include 1,300 student participants. Of that, about 85% of the community participates recreationally, and the other 15% compete on one of our 18 university-recognized competitive teams. Today, as part of BDC Live, we wanted to give you an insider look into some of the competitive matches we play. Our teams compete in a number of different leagues, and also compete formally in the Big East for two titles, Rocket League and League of Legends. Up next, we're going to feature some in-game footage from a recent match we had against Georgetown University in League of Legends. Before the clip begins, I wanted to give some context for the video. First, the players you hear speaking are the shoutcasters. Just like broadcasters do during traditional sports, they are calling the games and talking about actions of the match. A number of our matches and tournaments throughout the year are shoutcasted, and we also have quite a few students here at DePaul that are shoutcasters as well. Second, while you're watching the recording today, I'd also encourage you to check out one of our matches live. A lot of our matches are streamed via a site called Twitch, and there students gather to cheer on our teams through the chat. Just like players cheer for traditional sports, we have a culture and online gaming comp competition where we support each other during the live streams. We typically have at least 50 to 100 people tuning in live in our production streams to cheer us on. Finally, as you're watching, there's a few logistics that you are helpful to know. League of Legends is a team-based strategy game where two teams of five powerful champions face off to destroy the other's base. During the match, our students are talking in separate online chat room to discuss strategy as they compete together. The DePaul characters are the ones that have the red bar over the top of them. Even if you aren't familiar with gaming, we hope you enjoy this short look at our matches and can appreciate the production value of the broadcast. With that said, let's get the clip started. If you have any questions about DePaul Esports, feel free to reach out to us at esports at depaul.edu. You can follow us on social media at DePaul Esports or visit our website at esports.depaul.edu. As we say in our community, good luck, have fun, and be Vincentian. We are going to join in midstream now, but we will give you guys the opportunity to also hear a bit about the match and the post-game interview. At this point in the match, DePaul is currently winning and is about to take the victory home. If you want to catch the full-length match, we've uploaded it to our YouTube channel. Enjoy! which means that a massive amount of mixed damage will come through. We're just talking about Zerch, about Vladimir, not really present in that last fight, but still putting out loads of damage, will be able to phase rush in, has the ghost available that we talked about during champ select. I'm terrified about the damage that can come out of this Dapal lineup, but credit to Georgetown, they are not giving up on this game yet. Yeah, absolutely. The, you hit the nail on the head, it's Zerch and King Amazing with just a, an absurd amount of damage both as burst and as uh, uh, sustained damage throughout a team fight that they can put on. Look at that, stealthing forward and just with one auto and the Q, the Acapian Rain does whoa, whoa. of the front whoa. legs health bar. Uh, call, call the newspapers, please. Isaiah has just missed a hook. <laughs> yeah, right. It is headline worthy at this point. The guy's got 10 assists in 20 minutes. That means every two minutes he's oh. landing that. What is this? <laughs> That Magnetic hook. Error finding the kill for the Kaiser, looking to get that bounty higher and higher once more. Nar into the wall. Capture going to use the um, the ultimate try to get away. The cyclone being used once will be used twice as well in an attempt to survive, but it just isn't happening. Flashing away has the Gore Drinker tries to get their heal against these two targets, but Overpowered Brute is here. Capture will get charged down. The question is, what have DePaul been doing across the map while this goes down? They already found the turret in mid. Now they're looking to get more kills in the top lane. King of Mazes ripping through the health bars of that Hecarim like they are a knife through butter. Yeah, and I think this would be a fantastic opportunity to immediately go for Drag or Baron, excuse me. I know that they don't have their top laner, but he's up with Teleport in 20 seconds. With that amount of items that Kai'Sa has, I can only imagine they would just have melted through that Baron with Anuna to secure it. Uh, they knew that the enemy was returning to base, but uh, you know, we're, we're not quite at the highest levels of uh, competitive play people are still especially learning to play with their teammates you mentioned that this is a relatively young team uh in terms of their time spent playing together for depaul so maybe they're not quite quite ready to make immediate judgments like turning on baron at only 20 minutes i mean maybe superman but maybe they're just big brain they don't want to fall into the classic dignitas curse of winning until they lose yeah it's possible i don't think it's actually 
like I think I think it's like an 80 20 risk with the 20% being that slight possibility that uh, Baron play gets turned around on you I think it is I would be absolutely terrified to try and face check into no vision I guess a four and one Vladimir with seven stacks of Majais with death cap on the way and an 11 and one Kaisa that clearly has shown that she's not afraid to dive in 1v4 to take out the back line <laughs> and trade her life for one and a half for what it's worth, I absolutely don't disagree with you, but I still like the way that Paul are playing this one out. We all can see the root connecting onto Zerch, but you see just how little damage he takes at this point. Ryok will become the fast fairly soon, does have Gale Force available, but in comparison to the items completed by his opposition number, just not even close. This is Ocean Soul being secured by none other than our favorite King Amazing. Teleport's gonna come in, and already the Gnar has been deleted from the fight. Overpowered trying to charge on King Amazing, but nothing but attack. Absolute zero on top of his head. That's going to be the fresh express. And the lantern pulls Kaisa in for a triple kill, looking for a potential quadra of the plasma will go raining towards the base. I don't find any more this time. But on the back of a triple, it's Ocean Soul and probably Baron. Yep. Uh, I guess Sloan Steady wins the race. They wanted to make sure that they could secure the Ocean Soul first before going for the Baron. It worked out really well for them, considering right after getting Soul, then Blue Team was out of position. Georgetown wasn't quite ready for how quickly they could turn around that fight. And now that'll reward them with the Baron to boot. And I think it'll be smooth sailing to close out the match from here. It's really hard to throw a 10,000 gold lead. It's hard, but I have seen it before. One of my favorite games I ever got to cast was from that exact situation and boy that was a fun one fishbro finds himself on a killing spree all of a sudden four two and two he's had a few shutdowns he's got himself key items he's actually gonna be able to divine thunder rather than the trinity force this time around also just one thing i want to really quickly say i know it's it's your job as the color but I, my eyes are drawn towards the bramble fest towards the two executions callings and that 2400 gold of vladimir tax being paid in an effort to try and negate some of his healing <laughs> it just doesn't matter a little bit yeah, it's uh, expensive, but also necessary against not just the Vladimir, but an Ocean Soul too, and a lot of healing that can come through from the Nunu. But to be fair, uh, healing only does so much. There is one possible hope that could come through for Georgetown, and that is if King Amazing continues to play hyper aggressively. Okay, I think it's over. <laughs> Vladimir, hyper aggressive. I give you Zerg, big old ultimate, big old pop. It's gonna be Kaiser who gets the kill yet again this time onto the other star. And with the cow gone, the stakes are high, and it is going to be all the cards down on the table, looking like it's coming up trumps for the team that is double. Yeah. They are pushing down towards this net inhibitor turret and looking dominant. Yeah, stakes are high, stakes are served. That's nine deaths now for Ooh. Subaku on the cow, and that just means there's not the crowd control available, which is the point I was gonna make about maybe you can lock down King Amazing. He's got no defensive items if he does make like an aggressive dive with Killer Instinct, but at this point, they keep losing that ability to have crowd control as part of their team, and beyond that, you do, uh, is the damage there? Maybe from the Corky, but I don't see it elsewhere. Inhibitor turret has fallen, exposed inhibitor in the mid lane, soon to be another turret falling on the back of this Baron and Howard push here in top. It is the five man stack coming through from this big powerhouse that is the fall. It finds those one kill absolutely zero. Gets a good amount of damage down when you see Fishbro use the package, trying to find the burn, trying to find the kill, unable to do so. Does eventually get one onto the Nuno, but it is a consolation prize. Kill on Darzer as well. Perhaps Zerch has been off a little more than he can shoot. Capture goes in, taking turret shot after turret shot, but Kaiser's still alive. Vladimir finds a double to round the game out in style for DePaul. DePaul University suffocating Georgetown inside their own base, baiting them outside the walls where appropriate, and they're able to take down this Nexus turret, and the second one will fall. Going to be the game-ending push. The death timers were just too long. The dominance was just too much. And DePaul joined Butler and being victorious in their opening games on this stream here at Big East. Wow, congratulations to DePaul, able to take that victory. I'm sure that Nexus did explode. <laughs> I mean, there's not much to stop them. It's, I mean, today's gotta be the day of 80 carries. It's a reckoning for people who have to play against the likes of Lundstrom and King Amazing. These two 80 carries getting ending the game with a thousand gold bounty. I mean, credit, of course, to last game where he didn't die at all, but 17 is one is absolutely mind boggling. King Amazing. I'm looking forward to speaking with him. I think we're going to get an interview with this victorious AD carry in just a minute or so. Uh, that was a wonderful, very entertaining game to watch and a fantastic performance by DePaul University. 
Hey, all I'm saying, Superman, is that on my screen, the Nexus still hasn't been destroyed. As far as I'm concerned, it's shredding his Nexus. <laughs> Who really knows if it's gone or not? It's definitely Hope is alive. Gone. 100% well, definitely gone. I gotta give uh, props to Georgetown. Even though that last team fight didn't go their way and they ultimately lost their Nexus, you can see that they tried to play to the only win condition they had in a team fight like that. They got the Gnar to dive back onto Kaisa, slam her against the wall, try and have Hecarim follow that up. Even the Corky valked through the entire enemy team to try and be back there to deal DPS, but there's just too much healing from the, the Ocean Break. But uh, we got King Amazing here. I'm excited to talk to him. Team Welcome, Amazing. King Amazing. Yeah. This Hello. is uh, the, the man of the hour as, uh, as that last game was delivered. Welcome to the stream, King Amazing. Congratulations on your win and great performance today. Thank you. Uh, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about the draft. Uh, it was a little bit all over the place and we weren't sure what to expect. Although you guys picked up the Thresh early on. Uh, how do you feel about Arzair's Thresh? Uh, yeah, he's definitely good on Thresh. Um, obviously, the some engaged champions are a little bit easier to execute, like Leona or Rel, but we went with Thresh, primarily because Thresh can, like, cancel Alistar combo in lane. So we just figured that'd be a good pick, and he's just overall, like, a very versatile champ. And then, uh, playing off of those early game hooks, you, it seemed like you had, uh, a pretty solid plan, and you executed on having the jungler come and camp bottom lane, and, and <laughs> honestly, the snowball coming through lane, what, I joked on stream that it was like the 26th time he came in, in about 10 minutes? How did that work out for you guys? Yeah, since level 1 they invaded, and Alistar blew his flash, it was pretty clear to us that we can just easily gank bot. Jin, Alistar, especially with Alistar having no flash, early game it's like new new thresh, it's a very, very easy lane to gank. So it was pretty easy for Nunu to just snowball through a lane as long as they weren't completely under their tower. And and Greyheart mentioned to me that he had spoken with some members of your team prior to today's game and that you guys uh, don't have a lot of synergy built up just yet because you, it, this is a relatively new squad as far as the synergies go. Is that true? That's true. Uh, we're hoping to scrim more, though, so we can practice, um, so we can like get better as a team, I guess, and move forward from there. I'm oh, glad the, to hear that. Uh, oh, sorry, I was just going to say, uh, one of the things that uh, Reed mentioned to me in a uh, very, very brief chat earlier was the fact that you sort of started as complete strangers coming into uh, coming into being a team together, but now you're like really feeling like quite a close-knit team. Do you think that really helps? You've kind of got that friendship going on as well as just being, you know, having to play the game together? Oh, uh, yeah, it definitely helps. Last year I was completely new and I didn't um, really know, I guess, anyone. But now that I'm like getting to know the team a little bit better, it's definitely... I mean, that definitely helps with like team cohesion. Obviously, you don't want to be like toxic towards your own team. That doesn't <laughs> help. So if you're if you know your team better, that will help you guys. I guess that builds synergy in a way. Yeah. So you guys closed this out relatively quickly. You got that Baron pushed for the win. Uh, congratulations again on your victory. I I want to mention to you that we had uh, Butler's AD carry be our our MVP from the match previous to yours on stream today. He said that going deathless with a thousand gold bounty at the end there, 13 kills to boot, uh, would be standard for him moving forward, and that his team was poised to take the entire Big East Conference by storm. What do you have to say about that? Um, yeah, uh, I guess I definitely answered one kill. In my opinion, <laughs> I thought the game was definitely won, so I kind of like for fun answered, but um, yeah, if you're really, really fed on ADC, I guess it's pretty hard to die if you're getting peel, especially if you're playing Kaisa, but... I mean, we'll see how it goes. Butler, like, Butler is definitely a really good team. Um, I'm hoping that we can maybe practice so, like, we can compete against them. I'm hoping that we can, like, maybe beat them. We'll see how it goes, though. Yeah, you have a few weeks before you have to take on DePaul in an actual matchup here on stream. So, uh, good luck with your scrims, and I'm glad to hear they're going well for you. Congratulations once and again on the win and the MVP. Thank you. Thank you for the interview as well. Up next, we're going to feature some in-game footage from a recent Rocket League match that took place during the Big East and MAAC Challenge. This match features our team in action against Fairfield University from the MAAC Conference. I'm excited to share this clip because I've been a member of the team for the past three years and it has been a defining experience of my time at DePaul. Now before this clip begins, I wanted to give some context for the video. To begin, Rocket League is a pretty simple game and it can best be described as soccer with rocket-powered cars. We're seeing this fully produced match today, but our team also was in communication in another call to discuss strategy and gameplay as they competed. 
The match that we featured today took place during a best of five series. We ended up taking both this match as well as the whole series. As we went further throughout the tournament, we ended up taking second overall in the Big East and MAAC Challenge. If you want to see the full match footage, we've uploaded it to the DePaul Esports YouTube channel. And if you have any other questions about DePaul Esports, feel free to reach out to us at esports at depaul.edu. You can follow us on social media as well at DePaul Esports or visit our website at esports.depaul.edu. Enjoy the match, everyone. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to game four, I believe. We've done a lot of Rocket League today, so yes, now we yes. are going. We are technically in the quarterfinals, and it's going to be Fairfield versus DePaul University. Now, we talked about this a little bit off stream, but I'll bring it up early on here. I wanna, I wanna draw that comparison between Marquette and DePaul, where both of these teams are three and three. Their records are not phenomenal, but both of the people we've spoken with have both said, you know, that record does not reflect how well these players really are. We've spoken to Jaco and we've spoken to JFG, and they have both given, in my opinion, the epitome of what a team member should be. They've talked about the importance of esports in and out, and they have done a phenomenal job. Question is, can Jaco lead DePaul to a victory the same way JFG led Marquette just minutes ago? Yeah, and, and this is gonna be very, very similar in the way of the matchup, where we see Fairfield, who is the number two seed in this tournament, uh, but this is also their first series of the day, so they're going to be coming in cold. Uh, DePaul also has a first series because they were a uh, forfeit win oh. over St. John. So the two teams really started to get warm up. When we talked to Jocko, we said that they've been doing scrims and stuff. I guarantee you Fairfield will do the same thing. Of course. So this first game will definitely be a teller for the series. Of course, and Jaco tries to find an open goal, but doesn't have the boost to do it fast enough. Elysium now going to get in the way as well, trying to send it back to Amin, and whoa! Oh. Matter with an open goal, clean midfield shot. Fairfield's going to put themselves up early on with that 1-0 lead less than a minute into the match. Yeah, and that was a great play by Fairfield. Really the speed on him, able to juke it out the teammates and get in there, and they had a little too much pushed up in that midfield, and like you said, they are able to take advantage of it right in there. 1-0 score going to the Fairfield. Yeah, Fairfield. No, but DePaul, Jocko, the team leader coming in hot. Jocko able to find that 1-1 one, one tie-up. I mean, speaking of open goals, I mean, Black Raven, mm -hmm. Jocko just off the back of it. Soccer's out a second too late. Jocko gets that free goal. I mean, we're not yep. even a minute in. That's two goals on board. And that is what's crazy is that's now two series back-to-back -back where we've seen a botched kickoff that led to a goal. Yep. And so it's beautiful sight to be able to see that. Jocko saw, oh, yep, they missed it. I'm in. And just... Sped right up to it. Absolutely had everyone beat. And they're in it. It is now a tied game. Yeah, absolutely tied up right away. And DePaul, I mean, that's a good look. You know, the open goal wasn't a good look for them, but Fairfield made the very same mistake minutes later, seconds later. So it, <laughs> it goes to show that, you know, maybe both these teams, like you said, this is game one for everybody. Yeah, it really is. So this is really them shaking that ice off, getting to know what type of opponents they're up against, and being able to really just go from there. So it's definitely going to be telling. Oh, oh no, no, no way that didn't go in. Matter, Black Ray. you are nuts. Matter with a with the defense, the block of something I thought was a guaranteed, but Matter somehow able to able to find another open goal though from DePaul and Fairfield. Matter not only prevents their goal but finds one of his own off the back of it. I mean, he walks that thing across the field. Yeah, definitely a misread by the defense in that midfield where Matter is coming down and they just they pre-jumped way too high on that defense. So on those situations, I, I think we saw DePaul get a little too greedy on that midfield. He should have just made his way back to the net and tried for a 50 to cut him off. So Yeah, agreed. Agreed. And I'm hoping maybe between Fairfield and DePaul, I mean, we're seeing a lot of aggression. Everybody's abandoning goals. That's, that's something we've noticed not once, but three times now. I mean, that's something we've seen three times in a row. And I'm thinking with players this aggressive, it's almost destined we're going to see a rule one in here somewhere. Sometime, somewhere. And we just can hope and pray that they actually respect the rule. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Nothing yeah. I love more than a respected <laughs> rule one. And I, nothing, nothing makes me laugh harder than people that, I mean, two, three minutes into a match, they're just slamming into each other. And that always gives me a good chuckle. But now we're going to see Fairfield. They're going to have to, I mean, oh. never mind. They're going to have to stand still and do nothing as Black Wraith gets the freest goal we've seen. And we've seen three open goals in a row. I mean, Matter is in Soccer uh, Scout at the bottom. Oh, okay, no, yeah. Soccer Scout does go for it. Okay, yeah, I just missed. Okay, see, that's what I was trying to get. I couldn't quite see who went underneath, but I saw Matter watching it, and I think in his mind he's going, "All right, cool, I got a teammate here, he's got it." But as we can see, uh, that Soccer was too far forward, and so that shot was just over him. The backflip wasn't where it needed to be. That that's just unfortunate. Yeah, 
Absolutely, definitely unfortunate. But now we see DePaul able to tie it back up. Lavish getting a little bloodthirsty. Our first demo of the matchup. Able to find that, but unable to find the goal off the back, off the crossbar, and able to send it back down. Fairfield now. Lavish getting bloodthirsty. That's a double kill coming in. Lavish right now just trying to find these demos when they matter most. Jocko on goal. Can they find Great value up. off the back? No. Lavish a little bit too low. Black Wraith now playing that defense. And I, I, I specifically remember Jocko told us Black Wraith a little bit more of an offensive player. So mm -hmm. you see them blocking goals shows a great game understanding and knowledge of where they need to be. Yeah, last time I saw DePaul play, Black, uh, Black Wraith was playing as well. And you can definitely notice that. He is, is definitely more offensive-minded. He is more of the aggressive player in DePaul. Open goal. Um, which is good, yeah, because there were set up opportunities like this where he's bumping and he's able to set up opportunities for his teammates to get down there. Absolutely, and there's that offense we were talking about minutes ago. Ooh. That's going to be a victory lead for DePaul. 3-2, a minute 40. This is quite the high scoring game for game one. I mean, these people aren't even supposed to be warmed up. That's right. What? We were just talking his ear off about Black Wraith. We were really hyping his ego and he showed up. Beautiful 50 in the mid to get right in front of the net and Lavish was there to smack it in. Absolutely. A great assist coming in from Black Wraith. That offensive player doing a great job. And like you said, just the teammate there to clean up off the back of it. Jocko now great trying pass. to find a goal of their own. It's going to be oh another one. DePaul, they, DePaul has woke it up. That's two goals in 10 seconds. You know what? I am seeing a lot of similarities in play style between yep. Marquette and DePaul. So we, you talked about this earlier. If we end up seeing Marquette and DePaul in the finals, it, they could really be like at a standstill because their play style is so truly, similar. Truly. I, I assume it. Oh, Ooh, that was almost. that was almost disastrous there. Oh, Jocko there. Insult to injury. The goal doesn't come through, but Jocko sure does. Oh. Able to find that demo. And something I want to point out, I want to jump back here is I, something we're seeing is DePaul and Marquette play very similar play styles where they are playing as a team of three. Yeah. Lavish, again, a great shot. Marist and Fairfield, they are playing as a group of three individuals that are all very high skilled. I agree. But Marquette and DePaul, they are playing as a team of three. They are playing as one individual rather than three individuals on the same team. And it is... It is really working out. I mean, this was this was a nail biter maybe 30 seconds ago, but DePaul three goals in a row. I mean, come on, this is brutal. Yeah, three unanswered goals in a minute and a half. Like these guys are absolutely running with this, and I think that's perfect for the underdog story because of course. they're able to really run on that mode on that like momentum. And we kind of talked about this off stream where I, I really heard that in Jocko. Like yeah, he was absolutely so confident in his team that that is going to help lead them to victory if they get Is that there. another one? No, okay. Oh, <laughs> that would have been a great dribble. But yeah, no, it, I, it is, that's what we'll see. If if uh, we see DePaul come out, I guarantee you it's because of the confidence these players have in each other. Absolutely. And if you guys weren't able to join us for that interview with Jaco earlier, go back and watch it because that man embodies what it means to be a member of the eSports community. And yeah. he really just is a phenomenal player and a great guy. He was awesome to talk to. And he's very clearly a great Rocket League player. And he's got the teammates to match. I mean, they are now up 6-2 against a top seed team. And something tells me, they aren't even breaking a sweat yet. Not even. I could tell in a little bit, there was a little bit of trying to figure each other out in that first half of this game. But like I said, that's that's going to be the tell. And now they find, okay, cool. We warmed up really quickly. We have found their weaknesses. They're going to keep attacking it. No mercy in this, and I can guarantee you that. Yeah, absolutely. Six seconds, seven seconds left. Fairfield, I mean, the, the coffin was nailed long, long ago. They're just, maybe they can score one more, change the differential. No, nope, not even. That's going to be a clean, clean win for DePaul. Ooh. And the first thing I'm going to want to look at as soon as it comes up here is the amount of shots taken by DePaul. It's going to be wow. 13. Up next, I'm excited to share a clip from one of our communities here at DePaul, Super Smash Bros. You see, gaming can typically take place in one of three ways, either on the computer, on a console, or on a cell phone. Super Smash Bros. is a console-based game and is our largest console community here at DePaul University. The match featured here today was part of the Vincentian Cup. Back in December, we launched the Vincentian Cup as a tournament between the three Vincentian institutions in the United States, DePaul University, St. John's University, and Niagara University. Our Smash team ended up taking the W during the competition, and we're excited to share that here today. For Smash, our students compete as a team of five, but match up individually. For this matchup, you're going to be watching Matt Beach. Matt served as the captain for our Smash team and is a grad student majoring in community psychology. 
In the video, we were competing against Niagara University, and Matt is the blue character, which you may recognize as Mega Man. If you'd like to catch the full match, you can view it on our eSports YouTube. As always, if you have any questions about DePaul eSports, feel free to reach out to us at eSports at DePaul.edu. And you can also follow us on social media at DePaul eSports, or visit our website at eSports.DePaul.edu. Enjoy the match, everyone. So that is fantastic because Rob used to be a bit of a meme character, but here in Smash Ultimate, he's he's a bit of a tank. Yeah, definitely very hard to launch. We've got the Robo Boys online here, Rob versus Mega Man. And Mega Man, this is where the projectiles are gonna have to come out aggressive, because if you let Rob within your within your grab range, I mean you're asking to get zero to death. Emperor does seem a little bit uncomfortable, though, just with the playstyle as a whole. They seem, uh, I don't know, they seem, they seem rather, maybe not super comfortable. It's clearly working out as Matt Beach is taking in the damage here, but overall, it really does seem like maybe we're seeing Emperor not as comfortable as they want to be in this position. They've got the advantage. Question is, can they keep it? Because right now, Matt Beach, they're going to turn that around. Well, they did not switch off the Game & Watch at all earlier today, so maybe it's a new secondary that they're trying to bring out or... Maybe they just felt like they had to do something differently after they just got completely silenced on the Game & Watch in that first game. Yeah, Game & Watch definitely definitely was a comfort pick. Embrock very clearly executed that playstyle very well, knew exactly what they were doing. And on the Rob here, it feels feels a little clunky. It almost feels like this is this is just trying to pick a character with a similar playstyle. And while that does occasionally work, in this scenario in particular, I think Embrock might pay the price for it. They are, however, a little bit harder to launch, and that, at the end of the day, could be a difference maker. I mean, they're a complete... Well, they were completely equivalent on damage there for a little while. That was pretty interesting. Um, I mean, it, it's looking so much closer somehow. <laughs> they're tossing this disc back and forth. Oh, boy. Uh, not. Oh, it does confirm. Weird, okay. Embrock definitely could have recovered from that, but I'm not sure what happened there. Happens to the best of us. They're going to flip it right back around. Matt Beach able to somehow survive with fantastic DI there. Embrock trying to pick up any kind of elimination before taking damage. Unable to do so quite yet as the spring from Mega Man gets in the way a little bit there. 135% on this Mega Man is, is quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, and especially against Rob, you could certainly find oh. a kill. But okay, oh, there it is. That was a pretty is. good combo. Not Classic sure he needed Rob that combo whole combo, there. but that yeah, I think was... an up throw would have just done the work. But I mean, the combo was flashy, so it looked nice. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, but Matt Beach now starting to get into the groove of this matchup. Oh my goodness! Tries to spike That's him. Matt Beach, he can't quite favorite. get the second That's one. His favorite activity is spiking people off the map. You can tell he always goes for it when given the opportunity. If he can, he will. And they, they've only landed the one time, but it was nasty when it happened. So I'm not surprised to see Matt Beach coming at it again. Embrock somehow still at that percent disadvantage and have, maybe just has to play a little bit slower than what we're seeing or maybe just a little bit faster. Just the momentum right now feels so weird to me. Yeah, yeah, it does. It feels like almost like it's in slow motion. Um, oh, good sight. I just, yeah, that was actually pretty impressive. Uh, okay. So he's able to get the recovery back on to a neutral state. Both at very oh, high percent nice. right now. Embrock is oh, playing it much sticky. better here. Yeah, Embrock maybe just needed a little bit of warm up. Maybe wasn't planning to bust out the Rob today, but even as slow pace as this matchup has felt, I mean, in reality, it's only been two and a half minutes and it's, or three and a half minutes, and it's something that, oh, that could have been nasty, but instead, Matt Beach able to roll through it. The percentages really could not be closer. Both these players well into their kill percent. Question is, can one of them find the move they need? Because neither of them, I mean, actually, Rob has quite a few kill moves, and Matt Beach has quite a couple on this Mega Man and finds the utilization onto one of them. Embrock now down in the deficit, just, just a wee bit. Can they turn this fight around? Yep, there's the up air, and that's going to be what matters. Right back to 0%. We're going to go all the way to last stock here. All right, let's see. Yeah, I mean, it's just been much, much closer. Matt Beach was completely dominant. And, but the thing is, even though the damage feels closer, the game still feels like Matt Beach is in control. Agreed, agreed. Matt Beach on the Mega Man, just playing very slow, playing very patiently, and Embrock 
isn't necessarily playing aggressively into it. They're almost both playing different versions of the same slow play style. You know, this may just feel a little bit slower because we're watching Rob. He's not really known for his speed, but I don't know. Both these players, I feel even Matt Beach earlier had one of the fastest matches we've seen all day. And now this one, we've gone under the two and a half minute timer. Yeah, I mean, well, we did have one that went to 12 seconds. I don't True. think this one is going to get quite to that point. Uh, but it's definitely, they are ticking down the clock. And Embrock is so close to death here, mainly being kept alive by Mega Man's lack of kill moves and Rob's oh. incredible tankiness. But finally, he goes down. And Matt Beach going to get a solid 2-0 here in the first game. Embrock definitely looked a lot cleaner on the Rob. It started off pretty rough, and I gave them quite a hard time for it, but I was excited to see the Rob come out in general, and they are just barely going to have that series taken out from under them. But like you said, Matt Beach, pretty pretty clean 2-0. Maybe not as clean as they'd hoped, both only being a single stock. So DePaul not going to get a massive lead here, but a lead nonetheless.